and uh, we will uh, listen to, to, to the speech by, by Sergio about brain mates. Sergio. Thank you. Thank you to my moderator, the chairperson, the committee for this kind of invitation. And uh, as suggested from Martin Gore during his lecture, uh, CNS involvement is really a great problem for renal cell cancer. Um, what is the numbers about the, the problem? About 15% of uh, kidney cancer patients develop brain methods. Half and half uh, at clinical presentation in the following natural history. Uh, large part of these patients have the cerebral and not cerebral involvement and present with neurological symptoms, while the medium largest size is not so high because it's about two centimeters and the median number at presentation is one, and this is really, really important. Um, according to the clinical characteristics of presentation, we have uh, a large part of this patient presenting with an intermediate prognostic class according to the Daniel Eng score system. And in the same evaluation published by Vickers of the same group of the International Consortium, a per carnosity performance status less than 80, a disease-free interval less than one year, and the number of brain meds more than four are associated with uh, both prognosis. Um, what treatment this patient received in a 100 number evaluated for the study? Large part of this patient were treated with uh, sunitinib, while, sorry for the uh, numbers that go on left and right on the slide, Large part of these patients were treated with radiotherapy, uh, a little bit number with stereotactic radiosurgery or surgery. Um, this is one of the important messages that we derive from this presentation. Um, but which data we have to discuss about the approach of this problem in our renal cancer patients? Um, we have a small perspective as to study in untreated patients, untreated is for local treatment, 16 available patients in a study with an uh, uh, overall response rate as a primary endpoint. We have no local response, but only a stabilization in one third of treated patients. One complete response outside of the um, cerebral sites, a median time to progression of 2.3 months with a median overall survival that is uh, no more than 6.3 months. A large part of the available data, however, derived from uh, studies for bevacizumab and especially from the expanded HS program uh, with sorafenib uh, and uh, sunitinib. What's about bevacizumab? Because of the initial uh, negative experience with a fatal cerebral hemorrhage in a patient with a liver cancer uh, with an, an undiagnosed brain meds uh, and that of a fatal cerebral hemorrhage, large part of the studies uh, involving uh, use of bevacizumab not only in kidney cancer but also in, also in uh, colorectal breast and other studies uh, avoid the inclusion of this patient and we have very, very few data. For kidney cancer, we have only a small number of patients entering in the own study led by Bernard who develop uh, uh, cerebral metastasis and no other more. Overall, in all patients treated with bevacizumab, we have uh, a, a small increase of uh, brain mass of about 3.3% in respect to one in the incidence of brain mass in respect to patient not treated with bevacizumab in controlled clinical trial. This is the data about the negative event that I speak about before. And the final message from a revaluation of the possible negative interference of the treatment of patient with bevacizumab and brain mass is that probably this is a casual event treatment decision should not be driven from the increased risk for treating this patient by bevacizumab only, but only by a risk-benefit assessment by the physician or single patient. But they do remain, even if, as you know, bevacizumab is one of the treatment of choice for patients with primary cerebral tumors, and this is a problem to understand in the balance of advantage and disadvantage for treating patients with this type of uh, agent. What's about sorafenib? We have the data from the North American ARCCS, the expanded success program that treat more than 2,100 patients. Uh, we have a, a cohort of patients of 30 cases that entered in the study. 50 of these patients were evaluated from the resist point of view, 
according to the evaluation that was modified for the study, of course, we have a, a disease control rate in the 72% of treated cases with a, a, a pattern of side effects that were comparable with the patient outside, without, sorry, um, brain meds, except for fatigue that was increased in this type of patient but absolutely no uh, uh, cerebral hemorrhages in uh, this type of patients. Um, large part of the available data derived, uh, in any case, from uh, the SUNIT in the Expanded Access Program. It was a world program with more than uh, 4,500 patients treated, the largest database, uh, also in the case of brain metastasis, uh, and some uh, minor data deriving from retrospective studies evaluation suggesting a possible advantage by treating this patient um, with sunitinib. We have data for more than 300 patients treated uh, with uh, sunitinib and brain meds. As you can uh, observe from the slide, uh, also in this case, as suggested from the consortium, there is a large part of patients classified as intermediate risk, even if in this case with the memorial score system, not with the ang one we have evidence of uh, clinical benefit in the more than 40% of treated cases in respect to the 61% of the overall population. And this, in my opinion, is more realistic as a possibility of disease control, but with uh, an advantage in terms of median progression field of overall survival that was uh, evaluable and if less than what was seen in the overall population, of course, and the median progression free of a little bit more than five months uh, and uh, an expectancy of life of eight months. The comment by Martin who presented uh, two years ago on this data at the ESMO meeting was that uh, with sunitinib we have a limited but present and individual activity in, in patients with brain meds. But the great issue to be discussed in this patient is about radiotherapy, it's surely not about the selection of uh, TKI or other BGF active agents. Uh, should radiotherapy be performed in our patient with brain meds? And the response is surely yes, because we have a clear evidence of a lower local control with the use of antiogenic agents alone, even if the study I've showed was really smart. And the possible causes in a model were found in a lower microvessel density and vascular phenotype of patients with brain meds in respect to other sites of involvement. We have evidence of an increased local control with the stereotactic radiosurgery or surgery with a possible trend in overall survival when combined with TKAs, and this advantage could be evaluated in about two months in a smart group of patients that were evaluated for this issue. Similar data derived also from the gamma knife surgery, this type of focal radiotherapy that now is uh, uh, Superated from a cyber knife, of course, as a modern type of treatment. But the concept remained that patients treated with focal radiotherapy in a, in a case have an increased local control. What is amazing deriving from this slide is that we have a demonstration that local control was absolutely maintained during the years while patients have a negative prognosis during the systemic control of the disease. And they have the idiot for systemic progression and not for cerebral meds. Uh, from the same study, we have uh, a, an identification of a Karnowski prognostic factor, number of brain meds and GPA score as the most important prognostic factor for overall survival. What is GPA score? It's a, an easy tool to estimate overall survival in patients with brain meds, not only for kidney cancer, but for all solid tumors that was tailored for primary site and treatment, identifying significant prognostic factor that were Karnowski performance status and number of brain meds to define is GPA score where four is the best one and zero is the worst one to identify a patient with an overall survival advantage that could suggest a treatment that could ameliorate the quality and quantity of life of this patient. Um, this was clearly showed uh, in, the, in the cartoon of, of the study, where we have the expectancy of life for patient with a GPA score of zero versus four, and was uh, easily to be understood from the, the expectancy of life in kidney cancer, what was the curve A in the, in the study. And uh, 
that helps to, to suggest what was the final message, what we can derive from these very few data of what was an increasing problem in managing with an optimal way, in an optimal way, patient with advanced kidney cancer. If you have a patient with brain meds that presents, sorry, on the other side, with a good performance status and less than four brain meds, especially if it was, uh, could be classified as a good intermediate risk according to the Eng score, but it's the same for the Mozart score, of course, you should uh, treat this patient with a combined stereotactic radiosurgery and TKI to improve both local control with radiotherapy and uh, expectancy of life with TKA. We have no sufficient data to support the identification of a single agent, in this case, as the treatment of choice for kidney cancer patient with brain meds. However, the larger amount of data that we have available at this moment is in favor of sleep. Thank you very much.